Well, you know, that really does raise some interesting possibilities because if the world is going to be environmentally degraded, uh, you could take a, a few friends of yours and we could go back uh, in the past and try and see if we couldn't live with the Indians a couple hundred years ago before the white man came. The trouble is that to you be able to do kills. that, you need such an advanced technology that with that technology you could solve our problems, <laughs> or at least solve us. You may be more of the problem than the technology. We also got to be the solution, too. Well, let me ask you this question, because uh, I mean, we're covering so much ground in, in a relatively short period of time. You're an educator, too, and uh, there's so much criticism of the American educational system today. Is that criticism valid, and what can we do to improve our educational system? What needs to be done? Uh, it is valid. And you, you compare how American kids do compared to kids of the same age in, in other countries, and they do miserably. And I'm not talking to, just about kids in uh, Japan or uh, Germany or the Soviet Union. Kids in uh, Singapore, kids in Thailand do much better in uh, science and technology and mathematics than Americans of the same age. Our kids are not working hard enough. There is not an ethos of respect and admiration for, for learning, certainly not on television. CNN aside, the amount of real intellectual content that appears on the mass media is very little. Uh, the amount of time kids work, the amount of homework, the, the, the salaries of teachers, the, uh, the encouragement of really good teachers, all of that is in a desperately bad, bad situation. I, I saw a, uh, a study where uh, high school kids in uh, Texas were, were shown a, uh, you know, Mercator projection map of the world, but with none of the nations with their names in them. A lot of those kids didn't know where their own country was, could not pick out the United States on a world map. Uh, some ridiculous number of them, 25% or something, when asked where the Soviet Union was, Point it to Central America. What do we do about it? How can we improve our educational system? But One thing you can do is you can put a lot more federal money towards improving the education uh, in the schools, which is, of course, a, a state function as, as specified in the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't say that the federal government can't help to educate its own, its own children so that the United States will, will be in reasonable but shape in the future. don't we spend more money than any other country on education not, by far? I don't think so. Not per capita. I don't think that's right. And the ethic of hard work, the ethic okay. of... Now, that money, money, that, that, I just, I really question whether salary, it's a total money problem. Uh, Ted, I, I, know, I know many cases of very bright uh, men and women who are coming out of college who temperamentally would like to be teachers, but the amount of money being offered by industry is so much larger than the amount of money that's uh, offered as a teacher that for financial reasons they go off uh, in, that, uh, in that direction. Do you think it can, it, that problem could completely be solved with money? Uh, I, money alone won't do it at all, that's not at all. It requires a change in how attitudes. seriously and Parents have to parent, stress. Parents, Less watching teachers, of television, for instance. School, and yeah, oh, ooh, very important for you to say that. Well, I mean, I say <laughs> it all the time. Uh, school boards and mass media. I'll give you an example. More emphasis at every, every level every on newspaper. improving education. Absolutely. Every newspaper in America, with very few exceptions, has a daily astrology column. Astrology is bunk. Astrology is fraud. How many of them have even a weekly science column? Why that disproportion? How much real science is there on Well, they say they're giving them, that's what the networks all say. We're just giving the American people what they want. Right? And that, you know, that, And we're that, dragging ourselves down and down and down over the last 40 years. I, I know, I mean, I've seen it. Carl, I don't think there's anybody on this planet that has better credentials to answer this next question than you do. Do you think that there's uh, life anywhere else in the universe? Well, think, <laughs> think is a strong word. Um, if, if you look at how many other worlds there are, uh, how many stars in the Milky Way galaxy, how likely it is that most of them now, likely now, most of them have planets, how many other galaxies there are, it seems the height of human arrogance to imagine that this planet is the only inhabited world. But at the same time, we don't know of life elsewhere yet. We're just at the very earliest stages of, uh, of exploration, and we've not found life anywhere else. Uh, we've sent uh, spacecraft, uh, as I said before, to, uh, to a wonderful, exquisite array of other worlds. We've learned an enormous amount from them. 
We find on some of them the, the chemicals necessary for the origin of life, you know, the stirrings, the intimations of life, but no sign of life. We've also used big radio telescopes to see if anybody is sending us a radio message. And both of those efforts have not yet succeeded. So we haven't found life elsewhere. Uh, I, would, I would think a universe in which we are the only living things is much more incredible than a universe just burgeoning, overflowing with life. But we can't be sure. It's an experimental question. It has to be addressed experimentally. And uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, I'm such an advocate for sending spacecraft to other worlds and for using large radio telescopes to, uh, to listen for signals. Are we continuing to listen to those uh, signals and monitoring more frequencies all the time to... Uh... Yeah, the, the, uh, the interesting thing about it is how cheap it is. At the present time, the uh, by far most sophisticated uh, radio search program, SETI, it's called Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, program on the planet is being sponsored and paid for by a private membership organization from members' contributions. It's called the Planetary Society. It's a Pasadena, right, California yeah. organization. I happen to be the president of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's so cheap that, uh, that we're able to do this uh, 8 million channel search, 8 million separate frequency stations, if you like, uh, scanning the northern skies to see if, uh, if anything's coming our way. Nothing's coming our way, our way yet. Uh, th this issue seems to me to be a very fundamental question uh, because we are uh, parochial, we're provincial, we're stuck on one planet, we know only one kind of life, and, uh, and so we don't know what else is possible. Also, if we talk about intelligent beings, uh, we think a certain way. We, we think we've got a lot of stuff figured out. But we're not positive that someone else, smarter than us, independently evolved on a planet of another star might not look at the world in a different way. It would be a very sobering experience for us to compare what we think we know with what other guys smarter than us know. That's one, one of the many important aspects uh, to it. But imagine the other way. Um, I mean, we've now, uh, uh, as I keep saying, made a preliminary reconnaissance of most of the worlds in the solar system. No sign of life. That suggests life doesn't come everywhere. Life isn't all that easy to arise. And it says something, therefore, about the rarity and preciousness of life on our planet. It's something that needs to be cherished, take, taken care of. So the flip side of not finding life elsewhere is a much greater respect for the life that's here. And here, here we are destroying an acre of forest every second on the planet, destroying species left and right, and imperiling even ourselves. It's, I think, a useful perspective to recognize that life isn't all that easy to come by, that we have an obligation to uh, preserve life on this planet. So there are many aspects of looking for life elsewhere that uh, seem to be very important. Another one is our own origins. How did we, us humans, us animals, us life on Earth, how did we get here? 